everybody, I'm Lindsay Adler, and today I'm going to be stepping outside of the studio to quickly grab three different shots in a matter of minutes. We'll also be bringing along our Tether Tools Case Air to give it a spin. Let's take a look. When I shoot on location, it isn't usually about what's right or wrong, but instead it's about what's right for my concept. Natural light, strobes and location gels, none are better than the other, but it's about the mood and concept I'm trying to channel. And so for this shoot, I'm gonna grab one of each. When shooting fashion and beauty, I always shoot tethered so that my team can see the results for our collaboration. And that way they can quickly step in, fix the hair, the makeup, the wardrobe, whatever's required. Plus on a bright and sunny day when it's hard to see, it's a great way to monitor my focus and exposure. Now on the streets of New York, it's not really easy to bring my full laptop, a monitor, a tethering setup, especially if it's just a quick shoot or if we're managing a lot of other gear. And so that's why I set up my Tether Tools Case Air. It's going to allow me to wirelessly transmit my images to an iPad. The Case Air creates its own wireless connection. I've set it up so that it's only sending over the JPEG files to the iPad app. So it makes a really quick transfer time. And that way my team can watch in real time. The app allows us to check the focus, switch to live view if we want. We can even change camera settings like aperture and ISO. Now, if the situation calls for, I can even take a photo from the app itself. So with this all set up, it's time to shoot. For my first shot, I decided to go for something a little bit softer using the natural light in the scene. My favorite light source in this situation is when I can find a white wall or something where the sunlight is bouncing off of because this creates a broad, soft light source and also makes beautiful catch lights in the eyes. So I found a white truck and the sun was hitting it. Now, because the fence behind it didn't fit my concept, I had my assistant hold a blue piece of paper behind to act as a clean background. believe that you should never put your subject directly in the sun until recently. Now, if done carefully, it can make beautiful results. So in this example, for this shot, I placed my subject directly in the sun a little bit later in the day. One of the great things I love about the sunlight is that harsh light allows me to play with shadows and get creative. So I had my model pose her hand so it would create interesting shadows on the face. We also played around with a white and silver reflector, and that way we could fill in a little bit of light into those shadows and create catch lights in the eyes. By using a narrow depth of field, I also help to reduce the distractions in the background. All right, lastly, I wanted to try something unexpected with a dash of color to totally change the scene. So I placed my model in direct sunlight, but instead I had to act as a rim light on part of her face. Then using my Pro Photo B10 Plus, I added a blue gel so what it would do is fill in colors to the shadows and that way it was mimicking the color of the wall. By underexposing the ambient light and then adding the blue gel, I created something really dramatic and really surreal. So taking a look at these three shots, which one do you like best? Again, there isn't a right or wrong answer, but the idea is that there are multiple right answers. Whether you're using natural light or you completely change the scene by adding a strobe, each one is different, but everyone is a beautiful result. It's all about your concept.